even though it was a broad, generalized, okay, where he's looking at people in general, he's actually targeting, and this is something just interesting to note, he's actually targeting, uh, in terms of his market, uh, mostly undergraduate and graduate uh, students, because those would be the people that would most likely be in those transitionary periods from studies to career. So in terms of that 30-day uh, you know, uh, best practices and so forth, uh, finding your niche and your you know, passions and so forth, um, he's actually gearing that towards the students that are transitioning out. Of. So it's not as broad as we you know, may think it is in that respect. So that's another way that you know, uh, someone who's pitching out something that could be broad is actually kind of zooming in and focusing in on a particular market. We have a actually really interesting book that we're doing right now by a psychiatrist who is uh, doing a relationship sex book. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's interesting for this example is actually we're doing a lot of outreach PR in general, but our three big hits we have are Good Housekeeping, uh, Psychology Today, and Playboy Radio. So it'll be uh, one of the things we're looking at is tracking you know, how the, how those three kind of different areas of interest, all of whom's audience will be in theory interested in the book, where do the sales come from, and where do the interests track back to his website, our book site, who's going online after hearing a radio interview on Playboy, are they starting on Playboy and moving to, you know, that sort of thing. Do you have a question <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the place where, I mean, the one thing that I have noticed, I'm talking to people about this, is you're right. Fiction is the place where you start to get to the really difficult question of where are you going to go uh, for these types of places. And over there, I mean, the experience that I have looking at this stuff with media is much more on things like music and um, movies and other places where there's much more, there are many more <coughs> communities of people who are like curators on the web. You know, that if you're promoting music, you know that you can go to Pitchfork, you know that you can go to a few places where there's trusted voices that are doing that. And I think that one thing that's starting to become important in terms of fiction now is the presence of different kinds of bloggers and all the rest of it and the way that they can drive sales that they hadn't been able to do before. So one of the things that I found talking to literary agents, especially about fiction, is their belief that people don't really trust institutions anymore, that the fact that something got a good review and a high-ranking newspaper isn't necessarily going to drive sales the way that it used to be able to, where a good review in the Times and a short notice in the New Yorker was it, and then you can go ahead and that's your career from there, isn't working as much. So it has been a matter of much more targeted micro-sales for trying to find as many different bloggers as possible. And that's where something that Gretchen said earlier, where it's a matter of having as wide a reach as possible becomes much more important. Um, a good example recently with that were these Jane Austen spoof novels that came out, uh, Pride and Prejudice and Sea Monsters and uh, these others, that pretty much entirely, I mean, when people say viral, it is a little bit of a way of saying we couldn't have done anything about that, which isn't exactly right. I mean, viral just means that it wasn't one huge place. It wasn't Michio Kakatani said, this book is great, and that was that. It was a lot of smaller conversations happening. But it is a matter of getting involved in as many of those conversations as possible. So 
I mean, that's well, that's one thing I wanted to ask you guys about. How have you found? What's the experience like of trying to figure out who these bloggers are and everything? It's one thing when you knew that the review copies go to your Rolodex and you have the Rolodex of who you're going to send it to. What's the new reality? Do you guys constantly update the list? Are you looking for different places where somebody with a readership of 20,000 a day is reviewing? What's the research process that you guys go through? I mean, yeah, I think our review department, they, they kind of brought the blog list over time and kind of work on it Obviously, there's so many out there, and like how many do they choose to send a review copy to? It's still an investment. Um, so they kind of analyze traffic and just see, you know, that's going to have to mark in terms of like putting up the list and giving the list. Yeah. This is a new copy that's going to work. Are they looking at that? They're not going to look at the list. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, yeah, it's always more than just ask. Sometimes they'll ask the bloggers themselves, but sometimes, you know, bloggers don't always have to. I think that you know, one thing is that yes, traffic is going to be a good proxy for that, but there's also another thing I think that's undervalued in this is to take a look at how many different types of comments are happening on a particular blog. Because even a blog, a blog that has 2,000 rather than 50,000 readers, but a very active set of comments all day long, suggests a much more entrenched audience. And rather than a blogger who's going to put something up, to their 20,000 readers who kind of scan the blog every day, as opposed to an Andrew Sullivan. You know, Andrew Sullivan's the best of both worlds, somebody who has a very active audience and a very large audience. But I think uh, another metric that needs to be brought into the blogging is how active, how interactive is the blog. And those are the places where you're more likely to have someone say, buy this book, and they will. And the that's particularly important with book sales, because when you're telling someone to buy a book, you're asking for significantly more from them and saying, listen to this CD or even go to this movie. You know, so that's a place where the trust implied by a heavily commented upon blog and a very interactive blog is going to be much more important. Whereas if it's just a matter of putting a track out from an album for someone to listen to, if you can get it to 20,000 people, they'll all click, click play. Um, so that's the one thing I would add is another metric to consider. I have a trick, because I, I got a few, this isn't why I came here, but I do happen to get a few pitches from publicists every week for my for my blog which is separate from my work and one of the best ways for me to pay attention is to have the actual author as soon as I get a note from a publicist I almost I automatically delete it um, it's not that they don't have anything good to say but usually when it's an author reaching out to you in response to something else you'd actually said it's, it's hugely more effective So your job may be to train your authors versus create a publicity department for them. <laughs>